Hi, Mark Kohler here, and I want to talk tax and legal strategies for RV owners. Now, this is coming from a fellow RV owner. Yes, I own a Winnebago Mini. Now, don't let the name confuse you. It is a 27-foot RV. I pull behind my Yukon. It's pretty cool, and I'm pretty excited. Now, I'm also a CPA attorney and small business owner, and I've got some tips for you if you own an RV, and we're going to break down pros and cons. You're going to love it. Now first, the bad news. Under the new Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, you cannot write off the RV as a second home any longer. And that meant the interest on the loan to buy an RV was typically gonna be this second mortgage scenario, second home write off. No longer in 2018 until 2025 and the law changes. Also, you cannot use the HELOC or a home equity line to buy an RV and think you can write off the mortgage interest. Now, under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, you can only write off the interest on your acquisition indebtedness for your primary residence. Now, I've got other videos on the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Watch them, learn it, but that's the bad news. I've still got some good news. Now, the main place you can write off an RV is as a business owner. Now, if you're not a business owner, don't give up yet. Don't turn the video off. I've got a couple other golden nuggets here. But that's where we're gonna be able to write this off. Not as a second home or the interest on a second home or a, a second mortgage to write off the interest. We gotta think small business. So let's look at the pros and cons of full-time or part-time ownership and having that RV be part of your business, maybe to get you to your rental properties, to check on them, to go to conferences, to go to shows, to go to conventions, uh, maybe to go work on a rehab property, go pick up supplies. That RV becomes a unit to drive around to go to your next client, your next meeting, something like that, where you're gonna travel some distances, the RV becomes a business vehicle. That's the concept that we're gonna play with here. Now, again, full-time, part-time. Yes, there's people out there that live full-time in an RV. Now, the full-time RVers get really two major benefits. One, they can choose their domicile. What that means is they can say, hey, I don't wanna pay California taxes anymore. I'm gonna become a resident of Nevada with my RV or South Dakota or another state that could work out well, Texas or Florida. Think East Coast, West Coast, there's, there are some states out there that don't charge state tax. Think Washington. Now, when you move out of your primary residence and you don't own a home anymore and you're in this RV full time, you can set up address services and become domiciled in another state where your retirement income and your business income, any income is not gonna be subject to state tax if we work it right. A lot of details there, but that's benefit number one. Number two is that this state tax savings is gonna um, add to the fact that you're driving around to do business and you're gonna be able to write off the mileage as you drive for business purposes. So if I'm uh, up over in Arizona doing uh, some business and then I've gotta go do an RV inspection or travel over to Texas to go to a convention, that mileage to get there is gonna be a tax write-off. But the con is that I cannot write off the RV as a whole. I can't depreciate it. I cannot take actual expenses. That's not gonna work and it's gonna be a major con. And um, I, I have to think about maybe even home office. There's a court case that's not favorable where some Yahoo tried to write off part of his RV as a home office when he was a full-time RVer. You're in such close quarters as a primary residence and that's what you're arguing your RV is here. Your home office is not even gonna be a write-off typically with an RV because it's just gonna be tough to carve out an exclusive area in your RV for business. Now again, hitting highlights here, part-timers. Here's where the RV gets to be a major pro because now the, the, the RV is a business vehicle and you're gonna say some percentage of it is gonna be for business use. And that means if I use it 80% for business and 20% for personal, I can write off 80% of the fuel, repairs, maintenance, the, the interest on the loan to acquire the RV, that becomes a write-off. And the big thing is I can depreciate that RV. So I could write off the RV. If it was 100% business use, I could write it off all in one shot. Can you believe that in any given year? That's a new benefit too with the 179 deductions of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Right? Where the government taketh away, they also give some benefits. You gotta find the spot that's best for you. So as a part-time RV owner, that RV becomes a really great way to deduct the RV and you're not stuck with mileage, you're actually writing off the RV. Now the con is that we're 
still taking care of our primary residents. You may be paying property tax, you're still maybe under a big mortgage and you want to downsize and you just can't talk your spouse into living in an RV full time. So you still got the primary residence and that's going to be also a problem for state taxes because you may not be able to move domicile. So you get to ride off the RV, but I'm still stuck in my state to pay taxes. Over here, I get to move my domicile and save on state taxes and ride off my mileage, but I don't get to ride off the RV and the home office disappears. So again, there's pros and cons. And what you want to find out is where's the RV fit best for you and your lifestyle? I think RV ownership is awesome. I think it's fun, it's fantastic. And there can be some tax perks if you structure it properly. So keep studying, don't give up. And I've got plenty of other videos to help you learn the details of this and help you expand your business to better live your American dream. Thanks so much for watching. And if you found that helpful, please look in the description below. I've got links to my tax and legal library, my QuickBooks training videos, how to start a small business, 50, 60, 70 videos, some as long as 30 minutes explaining more information on tax and legal strategies that will change your life. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter or check out my social media links, please click here. There are weekly free tips and strategies and articles that you'll find extremely helpful. And I would appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel. I've got so many videos here I produce every week on my YouTube channel and I'd love to give you a ping every time I shoot a new video. Thanks so much and keep living the American dream.